This video is continuing in our series about named distributions. This one is named the normal distribution. Uh, mm, that's mostly a name in the US. The rest of the world calls it a Gaussian distribution after Gauss. Um, and it's commonly referred to as the bell-shaped distribution, but you will never hear me again reference it as such. So we'll just go along with normal distribution. I'll give us some quick introductory examples of the normal distribution. The examples I'm going to choose are common, though they're technically wrong, but they're right enough that they frequently show up as the uh, examples to introduce this distribution. So we'll go along with it and I'll point out why they're wrong um, technically and why nobody really cares about that wrongness. I will write out the density function as a mathematical expression. I've skipped a few of the distributions uh, to date, written out mathematically because they get really complex really quick. You'll see You'll see this distribution is also complex, has a complex density function, but um, at least you know all of the symbols already. Some of the other ones, we haven't yet introduced the symbols behind them. Then we'll look at the density function in R as a plot, and then we'll make some fake data. So let's just dive into it and go for some quick examples. Okay, this distribution often represents uh, people's heights. So the idea is most people are around, oh, I don't know, somewhere just below two meters tall. So we might have a graph like this where right in the middle is like 1.75 meters. And some people are a little bit taller than 1.75 meters, and some people are a little bit shorter than 1.75 meters. But really, we don't have anybody who's around like a quarter of a meter tall. And really, we don't have too many people who are like, you know, 10 meters tall sort of thing. So people's heights are often said to follow a normal distribution. It's not technically true because the normal distribution has tails that extend off to negative infinity. And off to positive infinity. We call these the tails of a distribution. I'll say more about that later. For a normal distribution, technically the left tail goes off to negative infinity and the right tail goes off to positive infinity. And certainly nobody in this planet is above like 100 meters. And certainly nobody on this planet is below zero meters. So the normal distribution doesn't fit technically, but most of the air, most of the people's heights are within this kind of narrow range where the normal distribution fits well enough. So a lot of people will just ignore the technicality, and I'm actually okay with ignoring that technicality as far as it goes, even if there is some technical issue. Another example that doesn't fit perfectly, but fits well enough, is SAT scores. And really, it's a similar shape, but we'd replace this 1.75 with whatever the average SAT score is right in the middle. I don't know what the average SAT score is these days because when I took it, it was on a different scale than what it is now. But the point is that the people who write the SAT test literally design the test so the outcomes take on this shape such that there's like an average that people most often score around. And then some people score higher and some people score lower. So the normal distribution is often used for things like this and for a bunch of other stuff that I'm not going to explain yet in this class. But hopefully, once I do explain this other stuff, you will see that the normal distribution, despite these weird technicalities about negative infinity and positive infinity, is one of the most commonly used distribution in the world of statistics. 
there is like good, strong mathematical justification for why the normal distribution is the most common choice for applied statisticians to date. And we'll explain that much later in this class. Let's write out the density function mathematically. And I'm choosing to write out the density function for the normal distribution because you know all of the symbols in the density function for the normal distribution, different than, say, for the gamma distribution, where it involves some things you probably have not seen yet before in your mathematical career. And so I'm pushing that off for later. So uh, in proper terrible statistics, uh, stat statistics notation, all density functions are denoted with the letter F, sometimes P, but they always choose the same letter. So we'll denote the density function for the normal distribution, like most people do, with the letter F. It is a function of the variable X dependent on two values that should be chosen or thought to be fixed in some sense uh, temporarily. Mu, that is the Greek letter mu, spelt M-U, and this is the Greek letter sigma, spelt S-I-G-M-A. So here we go. We got 2 pi sigma squared to the power of negative 1 half. E to the negative 1 over 2 sigma squared. X minus mu squared. Uh, and that's it. This is the density function that gives rise to this shape. Oh, that is not a bad one. I am quite pleased with that one. Uh, the variable mu is always the variable uh, right below the peak. And sigma describes the width at uh, about the shoulder height of this distribution. Um, we'll get into more details about mu and sigma later, but just so you have a general idea of what these values are representing, it helps to see them here. So we will now jump into R and see if we can plot this density function, and then generate some fake data. So I'm just going to stick with um, maybe like the height example for uh, the normal distribution. So we'll pick our two parameters. I don't have Greek letters in R, so I'll write M and S for mu and sigma. And then we're going to go with our favorite friend, curve, into which we're going to use the function d for density of the normal distribution, but it just goes d norm. x is the value of the function. We want a mean equal to m and sd equal to s. I'll explain what mean and sd are later in this class, but for now we will just use the named arguments mean and sd, and we'll pass in the values we specified above as variables m and s. Our plot's going to go from negative 1 to 5, and we're going to draw out 300 points. Let's just see what this looks like. So here is the normal distribution as it might represent height. The average height might be about 1.75. Some people are about 2 meters tall, and some people are less than 2 meters tall, but really nobody's around 1 meter tall, not too many people at least. And I drew it to be a little bit skinnier than normal to really emphasize the point that these tails go off to negative infinity and positive infinity. So even if this was to represent heights, it doesn't technically work because nobody is tall with negative meters. That doesn't even quite make sense. And probably realistically, nobody's even above four meters. But the point remains, right here is where most people live. And you can see by the density function that indeed, this is most common values for heights. That's why it's tallest here. And as the heights get bigger, the density shrinks off, meaning that taller heights past two meters are less and less likely. So by all means, change these numbers around as you see fit. You might have to change from and to to help center the plot. Essentially, you want this value m to be 
somewhere right in the middle of the, these two from and to numbers. If you don't have the value m somewhere right in between these two numbers, then you're not going to see the plot that R draws for you at all. So I'll let you play around with those in your own time. We're going to create a new variable, n, which I'm going to deem to be our sample size. We're going to store into a vector named x random numbers generated from the normal distribution, capital N of them, and we'll pick values like we did before. Even if we don't know what mean and SD are yet, I will introduce those to us soon enough. And for now, we can <laughs> remember that we need to run the function, uh, run the line of code that declares N to be a variable, and then we can generate data. So here we go. You can see we now have 99th and 100 values randomly generated according to the normal distribution. And look, most of them fall right near 1.75, which is exactly what this plot is saying. Most values are going to show up right in between like something like uh, 1.5 and 2.1 maybe. And you can scroll through whatever values are generated on your machine, which will be totally different than the values that I just generated and confirm that sort of fact for yourself, that most values with these two, with M and S set as I have them, most random values will show up between 1.5 and like two or something. Now, what I'd like you to type out, and hopefully you're getting an idea of this, even if the idea is not crystal clear at this point, is that in the world of statistics, we can estimate this density function using only the random data we just generated. So if you pay attention to this line, which will show up in orange, this is me using some fancy statistics that I'll explain later in the class that shows using only the information contained in data generated from the normal distribution, we can estimate this true distribution. So if you just add that line to your plot, you see with only a sample of 100, we get something pretty close, though not perfect. Once you've settled on two values of M and S here, I encourage you to change the sample size around and then rerun all of this code to see how the orange, the estimate, lines up with the black density function. So the orange is the estimated density function from only data. And the black one is like the true value. So change the sample size around and see how the estimated density function lines up with the true density function. That was our quick introduction to the normal distribution, mostly just getting off the ground so we can see a general idea of what it's all about. We will spend the majority of this class on this distribution alone. So if you like this one and want to learn more about it, I'm glad you're excited. We have plenty to come.